and welcome to Add More Zest. My name is Rebecca, also known as 4 Kids at 147, and I am nearly there with my Diamond Art Club Mother Earth, which is awesome. I'm going to use the small blue zesty tray. I'm actually not sure if this whip and chat that I'm currently doing will be going out after these trays have been up and potentially sold out so apologies if it does but i am on a roll doing as many of these whip and chats as i can um getting my diamond art club painting finished and also making sure that i have videos up for you guys to watch it's sort of a bit of a a whip and chat marathon for me today but I'm really enjoying um, doing more sections of this painting because it's so close to being finished I feel like I sort of get a little bit faster um, it definitely seems to be a quicker process um, when it gets near the end of a painting so there's partly that going on and yeah, it's, it's going to be, as I'm filming this, this is before launch weekend. So once these two trays have launched, which I've currently been using in all the remaining whip and chats for Mother Earth, um, it does get to be a very, very busy weekend for me. So I want to give myself a head start on possibly the week after so I'm just carrying on I'm just carrying on chatting with you guys that is what my day has been today and it is rather enjoyable so I hope you're enjoying all these whip and chats whenever this one may go up I don't even know how many I've done now I just know that I you know go and have a break go and do some stuff around the house and then I'm like okay I'm going again and off I go I get to diamond paint with no disturbances because I'm filming and I get to chat to all of you while I do it so it's been a little bit of a, a me kind of day today even though I'm working sort of um, <laughs> in the fact of filming and getting videos ready to go up and I'll just keep putting these up I'll scatter in possibly an unboxing um, I know I still need to film um, a fan sales unboxing which probably will go up before this video who knows and I might scatter in some others depending on what videos I do get done but I will of course have these whipping chats up until they've finished so if things seem a little bit out of sync for some people i do apologize um there is a lot of whipping chats this week but it's the way the world is working and yeah i want to get this finished and yeah i want to get through all your comments and questions i can move my computer over a, a little bit now that I'm getting right near the end of this painting. Only two more sections to go. But I still have comments. I am actually on comments from a couple of weeks ago when it was Mother's Day here in the UK. I know it wasn't everywhere. Um, so Polly has said Happy Mother's Day to me. She said in the US as is in May. And she says that she really enjoys my chats. So thank you so much, Molly. Polly, sorry. That'll teach me to not look at the screen when I read out a comment. Uh, yeah, that was from Polly Tobin. Uh, Catherine said Happy Mother's Day, Rebecca. Uh, in the US, she said ours is in May. Yeah, I knew I, I, it was, there was ones on different days. I just never 
quite new when. Uh, she said she was shocked and excited to hear her comment read in this video. It might take me a bit to get to your comment, but I do often get there. She said she was working on Remembrance by Anne-Marie Bone through Dreamers Designs while listening. She said she hopes all is well across the pond. She did her DNA a few years ago and found out she was 100% European, 75% English. Well, hello, English person. Um, I think mine is a mixture of Welsh, Scottish and English, I think. I don't quite know. I've not had like a DNA test done. I'm just going from the fact that my granddad was part Welsh, part Scottish and I think my other grandparents were all English. How far back that goes? Who knows? I don't quite know. Um, but I'm sure my I'm sure my granddad had part Welsh, part Scottish. Um, I'm going to say number 13 because this is again this is the user who I can never remember what language, I'm not sure if it's Jewish, that her her name is is posted in. I'm sure I'll come across a comment in a bit where she reminds me again. I should really write it down. I should have like a cheat sheet post-it note of things that I constantly forget and do say on whip and chats. Uh, I may be organised in many aspects, but I'm not that organised to have a little cheat sheet. There are many things that I would love to implement organisation-wise that I have. I've just not got round to. There always seems to be something that needs doing first. Uh, but she said she was so happy to see that I uploaded a video. She waited it waited all day to see it to do her own kitting up and kitting down alongside my whip and waffle she says how much fun awesome I love the fact that people sometimes wait for my videos I know there was a week I'm not sure if it was last week maybe it was the week before um, where YouTube seemed to be extremely slow in loading up my whip and chats and uploading it to YouTube so that it could be ready. Some weeks I have I have time to get it uploaded if I get it filmed, you know, in the morning slash early afternoon. Sometimes I have plenty of time and it is uploaded and all ready to go. And other times YouTube goes, ah, nah, I'm gonna go slow today. And sometimes I actually have to wait another hour. Ends up being five or half five, I think I uploaded a video once. But I try to get there. My whip and chats is definitely something that I try my hardest to get there with. It's not always, you know, maybe a heaven and earth design that I have planned to do. But I always try to get my whip and chats done, even if I can just give you guys an update on what's going on if things have been a little bit crazy. I never used to do as many whip and chats, but everybody seems to really enjoy them, which is what made them become a regular occurrence. And sometimes if my tablet is charged for my Heaven and Earth design, for example, Sometimes a whip and chat can be some of the easier videos for me to do, even if they do take more time in the fact that each whip and chat is an hour or potentially more. Um, they are the, the least preparation often required is for a whip and chat because you guys are always leaving such amazing comments um, and or questions in there that just make it so easy to just bring in the comments, bring in my computer, uh, set up a diamond painting and just go and what happens happens and you guys seem to be happy with me chatting 
all sorts of stuff. So thank you all so much for, for that support. It's been fantastic this week to just be able to whip and chat my way through the week. Um, it takes more time, but it takes less brain power, probably. Some videos take less brain power than others. Um, and they're really enjoyable and fun to do. So hopefully this will give some of you guys, maybe if you have got a quieter weekend, this Easter weekend, maybe you'll be able to catch up on some of these whip and chats. A bit like I've just spent the day doing a load of them. Uh, Debbie said, Happy Mother's Day. She said she's from Canada. So it's not celebrated for them until May. She's just purchased a purple zesty tray. So she managed to get one. She said her first one. She's so excited to get it. I'm sure you will love it, Debbie. Uh, she loves the whip and chats. And she diamond paints while she's listening to them. She's working on Some Enchanted Evening by Randall Spandler from Diamond Art Club. And it's the biggest one that she's worked on. There is a nice sense of achievement from big ones, especially when you get near to the point of being done. There is there is definitely a sense of achievement when you finish a big one. And I actually enjoy the process of a big one. If I'm not in a rush to get it done by a certain time, not in any sort of panic should we say where I keep looking at potentially the amount that's left and thinking oh, that's a lot as long as I don't have that to contend with then I do really really enjoy doing the large ones um, especially because I roll them up as I'm going along sometimes when it gets to the end and I uncover it it's like oh yeah that looks so good so much fun. Oh, we've got we've got a comment with lots of comments underneath on this one. I love it when you guys answer questions that I might not get to straight away. Um, it gives me, you know, different viewpoints that people can have on certain things as well sometimes when I'm replying. So let's see, what is this comment? So this comment is, Michelle says, she sees me placing multiple diamonds, but she doesn't ever see me adding more wax or cement to your diamond painting pen. She says, what do you use? Are you using something other than the wax that comes with every diamond painting? Yes, I am, Michelle. I use glue dots in my pen. I started, I think it was last June, during my June Whip and Waffle. They had been talked about for a while, but I hadn't given them a real go. Now I don't use anything else. I do not touch the wax that comes in the kits. Wax never used to be a huge problem for me. I know some people would have to be filling it up constantly. Um, but they were never a major problem for me. I could get a good few hours in of diamond painting without having to fill up the wax. But I can get days of diamond painting done without having to fill up. Now I've got glue dots. So it has definitely extended the time for me. All the sections of this diamond painting I have been doing through these whip and chats using this pen. So you will have seen this pen. I'm not sure, is it? It might be four. This might be the fifth section that I've done using this pen. I have not changed the glue dot in this pen at all. It has actually calmed down to be a pretty nice point now where it is not too sticky, I'm finding. And I'm still going with it. I get an eternity out of it. Uh, Louise says, 
the glue dots last the longest for them. Michelle has said she's never heard of glue dots. Um, she'd like to give them a try. She says, could you send a link? So she's given her, oh, she's given her some help um, with the brand of glue dots and stuff that she uses. So yeah, Michelle, it is glue dots that I am using in my pen. I do have some tips and tricks on glue dots and getting them into your pen as well. There's the odd ones scattered in videos where I chat, but in my tips and tricks series, where I'm going to try to get to 100 tips and tricks for diamond painters, I do talk about glue dots. Easiest way to find that video is to go to my website, um, which is linked here, admorezest.com. Uh, click on videos and then under 100 tips and tricks, I think it's one of the beginning ones, but it is titled glue dots and you can find out more about them there. We do also now sell glue dots in the shop. That is the glue dot that I have put in this pen. Just one of them, uh, and it's the sticks to glue dot that we sell that I've popped in this pen, and it's going cracking. Absolutely cracking. Depends where you are. If you're ordering something from the shop anyway, abroad then it's worth bobbing them in if it's the only thing that you want to order then you may be able to find them more local to you for less it really depends what country you're in because of shipping um, Cheryl she says hi Rebecca she lives in the US specifically Oklahoma I love the name of that Oklahoma um, she says she works at an elementary school with students who have learning disabilities. She said some of the students have started learning about geometry and she thinks that's why she thinks of the line with a dot at the top as a line segment in her own Diamond Art Club painting. If she wanted to get really specific. She would call it an o oplique. Oplique descending line segment. That sounds like a mouthful if you repeat a symbol in your head. But yeah, it is, it is funny how we associate things ourselves, especially with things we deal with in life when we're calling symbols certain things. Um, there is one entertaining symbol. I think people say it's like a, supposed to be like a flower. Definitely doesn't look like a flower. It's not one that Diamond Art Club use. But it is one that I have heard mentioned in the past. There's definitely a few that are, that are a little bit more entertaining than others. Um, I actually prefer the letters and the numbers. They're just easier for me to repeat over and over in my head, um, especially when I'm dealing with a painting that has quite a lot of confetti symbols. So symbols are all over the place. I will often repeat them a lot more. When I'm working on the likes of this, now it's this whole section. I won't tend to repeat that in my head. It's when I'm looking for them that I repeat the symbol in my head. Uh, Sierra, she says she does have to say that the only multiplacer she's been able to use is a two-placer. And so far, she said it's only been for squares. She hasn't tried it on rounds as she's not the biggest fan of rounds, but she does plan to. Let me find the next one. She has got another section on her comments. I'm just trying to find the number eight. Uh, she said, side note, she says, for your peace of mind, um, Army Mower and Engine, pronunciation Engine, 
are nicknames for people who are big fans of K-pop bands. ARMY are for the K-pop band BTS. MOA is for T times T, which is tomorrow times by tomorrow times by together. And engines, which is engine, are for the band N hyphen. <laughs> she said, as a massive fan of all three, it's quite sad I know this. Oh, thank you. I do wonder what is behind some people's YouTube names. Um, I know many people always know my my four kids at one four seven channel. They always wonder what is between the the four kids at one four seven. And just for any that don't know, um, it is because my hubby and I have four kids and we live at door number one four seven. It's it's quite simple when broken down, uh, but some people. You know, initially go to four kids at the age of one, four and seven and then realise that that's only three kids. So, yeah, it's it's door number one, four, seven and four kids. And it was created years ago for eBay, I think. And it sort of stuck as a username. For a few things and just became my initial username on YouTube rather than using my name. Nothing against using my name, I just wanted to be different. Uh, but yeah, now we're more known as Add More Zest. Add more zest into your life with diamond painting. But thank you so much for that. I will forget it, Sierra, I know I will. Um, I will definitely forget what each one is. I will try and pronounce it as engine when I do read it out because I know there have been a few comments that I have read recently from that username. So I've probably hashed it on a few more occasions before I got to your comment. I'll do my best to remember that one, <laughs> hopefully. Margaret, she says, Happy Mother's Day, Rebecca. Uh, she says, so glad the sun is shining for you. Um, she says, please give Megan my get well wishes. I did, Margaret. I read out quite a few comments to Megan saying get well, um, and she does appreciate all of them. I do pass, pass them on to the kids and to the family when they are mentioned. But yeah, thank you. She is feeling loads better. Which is a good job because we've got a new puppy. So she's got work to do. <laughs> she's got stuff to keep her busy. Uh, Sue says, hi, Rebecca. She says, happy Mother's Day from Australia. She says she absolutely loves my whipping chats. They're so interesting and informative. And glad to hear she said that the kitchen is coming along. Some of them, some of my whipping chats are more informative than others, but I think they're definitely they're definitely different, and you never know what you're going to be listening to. It's like chatting with friends, you never know. Never know what's gonna happen. And I just tipped all my diamonds into the pot, apart from three that just decided to go all over my desk. Let me rein those in. Uh, she says she also does enjoy the longer whip and chats as nice to have somebody to watch and to listen to while she's dotting along. You may have to save up some of these whip and chats on this last section, last couple of sections of my Diamond Art Club. I've decided rather than doing a big long whip and chat to do one per section and that's just to partly to keep me focused on comments and stuff and give you guys videos for throughout the week while I get my life back on normal track. Um, Sue says she does also have four children they're all grown up now she says and have families of their own. She also likes to single place 
her diamonds onto her canvas and uses tweezers for her ABs. I actually used tweezers the other day for some of my squares. It was a nice little change. I think it took me longer, but it was a nice change. And it was because I needed to, I needed to add another glue dot to a different pen. Not this one, one I've been using a glue dot in for months. I needed to add another glue dot in because it had sunken that far into the pen and lost its stickiness. And I was too lazy to move. But I had tweezers in my little cart, so I just grabbed the tweezers out my cart and did it with tweezers. I didn't think about grabbing it for ABs. I do have a little pretty placer that I've often used for ABs, but that's in my cart, which is why I've never pulled it out for this, because it's just not handy. It's just not here with my stuff. Uh, she says, looking forward to your next whip and chat. Well, you've got a few to keep you going while you work through yours, which is good. Uh, handcrafted by Helen. She says, your diamond, your Mother Earth picture, she says, is nearly finished. It's definitely nearly finished now. Helen, it is getting there. Um, she says, this one is a beauty. Excited to see what you do next. So am I, actually. I am, I am kind of eager to pick a painting myself, but I'm also conscious of the fact that I do have quite a few paintings in my stash that have not been touched for a while so I think I might let the app decide again um, she's about the same stage so Helen says she's about the same stage as doing of a Hannah Lynn she says also a Hannah Lynn because this is by Hannah Lynn um, of Daulu Dalua, Dalua, probably said that wrong. Uh, she says, love this artist. So this is the first one of Hannah Lynn that I've had. It was the colours that really, really caught my eye. In fact, I think I only have one more Diamond Art Club that I haven't done. I think that is the People's Princess one. That's Mandy Manzano, which I have done a couple of hers. I have done a few of hers. Um, but yeah, I have really, really enjoyed this one because of the colour, I think. Um, and because of, yeah, just mainly because of the colour. Just the vibrance of the colours in this one has been absolutely amazing. But yeah, I'm kind of excited as to what one could be next. But I think I'm going to still let the app decide. Because I know there's, a, there's actually quite a few that I would love to do next. There's one that keeps flashing in my head to do. But then when I look at my stash, there's about three or four more that join them. So I think I'm just going to let the app decide again. Because for suggestions of ones that people want to see covers pretty much all of them anyway. So let's blame the app if it picks one that we're not as keen on. Because, hey, it's electronic, it doesn't care. So let's do it that way. Uh, okay, let me get me colours changed. I seem to be doing a lot of up and down at the moment. I'm just going across to the next one. It's not getting too bitty yet, but it's annoying me. I may have to refill this one, depending on how many colours, but that's my tub empty. I do have a couple more bags that can be used for refilling if it's needed. But we'll see how far we get with the diamonds that are in here. It might be enough. I get so used to working with the bigger tray and I'm not as good at judging on how many with the smaller tray because I 
I've used the biggest bigger tray for solid for a, is it in a year? Do you know it's not even quite it's very close to being a year since this tray was launched and I was using it as soon as we got a nice one off the printer and the design was finalized. So yeah, I've been using the bigger tray for about a year and I'm not as good at judging on the smaller tray. Uh, Lisa's Colouring Corner, she says, another great whip and chat. She was gonna comment on a number of things, she says, but she's now forgotten. <laughs> I love the fact that you've commented anyway, Lisa. You just come back when you remember them, if you remember them. Um, and I'll be more than happy to discuss your comment. But I appreciate the fact that you commented anyway. And it's like me. Things just... I, I come on here thinking of things, you know, before a whipping chat. Or when I'm thinking about getting ready for filming. I'll be like, oh yeah, that'll be good to discuss. And then I finish doing a whip and chat. And it's like, oh, I didn't discuss that. What am I like? So it happens to us all, Lisa. All Things Crafty by Kaz. She says she's recently finished Baz the Boy diamond painting from Diamond Art Studio yesterday. She now needs to de-kit that and then start on a custom diamond painting. Woohoo! I have seen that Baz the Boy. It's the cat one, isn't it? With the amazing blue eyes. Um, it's a really nice diamond painting, that one. I am just not a cat person, mainly because I'm allergic. So it doesn't, they make me sneeze. So it doesn't make me want to take, a pit, take do a diamond painting, but it is a very, very nice picture of a cat with the most amazing eyes. Maybe I should just do the section that's the eyes. Okay. Seeing where I'm up to, I'm also seeing my battery go down on my laptop. But it's not beeping at me yet. So let's hope that we get this section done. Um, Sarah Jane, she says, hello and hope you're all keeping well. She says she's Sarah and she lives in Northamptonshire in the UK. Hello UK person. Uh, she says it's a, today is a bright and sunny day. She does, she so wishes that she didn't live in a flat and had a garden to sit out in. But she does love these videos and she does her diamond painting at the same time. She's currently working on an owl, which is a 30 by 30 in round, or at least she was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's the smallest one she's ever done, but she was given it. The small ones are nice. It's a sense of achievement in between doing the big ones. Don't knock small ones as well, because they're awesome. Not that I'm saying you are, but I love doing the small ones as well as the big ones. Uh, she says, will you be doing a June Advent one, type of one again? Um, she's seen the videos. Oh, she says she's new this year and she would love to do one at the same time, if so. She's seen the videos of previous years and she's still catching up on a few. Yes, I do have plans to do a June Whip and Waffle again. It goes down, people enjoy it. People enjoy the joining in. I enjoy the fact that, you know, we've got this sort of community join in, even if we are all doing completely different paintings. So yes, I will be doing it again. I have no idea what painting I'm doing. Um, but yeah, there will be one. So do please join in. Uh, it will be about a 30 by 40 size painting that I do. 
that is just to keep the whip and chats at a manageable size because while the last few days I have done a lot of whip and chats um, during the likes of the June waffle I tend to film them the day before they go up so I film them one evening to go up at four o'clock the next day due to work um, so I tend to do it each day, which means it needs to be a manageable amount of time each day, considering I'm doing it for the whole month. So a 30 by 40-ish painting seems to work the best for it. Seems to be the most practical size. Um, and it's also a nice size for people to potentially commit to doing each day. On a smaller painting those that can commit to a bigger painting can by all means do it some people commit to a couple of paintings so they commit to a 30 by 40 and they do a section on their 30 by 40 but then if they have more time then they work on another painting on top of that so there's a few different ways that you can join in and do it but yes I will be doing another June whip and waffle, all going as expected, of course. There's always that caveat that life may throw us a curveball. Uh, Nancy, oh, hang on, I have two that I think are stuck together. There we go. Uh, she says, another wonderful whip and chat. She says, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, so nice that you worked on Mother Earth. She said on Mother's Day, I hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day. Um, she said her daughter who lives in England celebrated her first. Oh, that's the best one. Uh, it's in May, she says, for us in Canada. And she hopes Megan feels better soon. She said, glad you liked my comments a few weeks ago. She says you are hanging out your laundry on the line she says and we have snow falling <laughs> it is minus 11 outside she said in Canada that is cold um, a little unseasonable she said for sure weather is all over the place at this time of year on Thursday they're predicted to be plus 17 she says thank you for the company while we diamond paint yeah, I may have been able to get washing out on the line on Mother's Day, which was a couple of weeks ago here, um, while I filmed that whip and chat. However, we then did have, I'm just zooming you out because I need to fill up my pot. Um, yeah, we did manage to have some and washing was out on the line and it was glorious. And then we went cold and parts of the UK had snow and we had some hail. And yeah, it was miserable and wet um, for about a week. Now we seem to be very hit and miss this last week. And I say this last week, it's this last week as I'm filming. Which means the upcoming week could completely change for everything um but yeah this this last week as i'm filming this whip and chat we we had a, a bit of hail though it was only for a couple of minutes so if you couldn't see outside you might have missed it because i sit in the conservatory when i'm working and i spend a lot of time in the conservatory um i could see it through the multiple windows but yeah we had a little bit of hail we've definitely had the cold we've definitely had the wind but then we could have really nice sunshine that makes me think do I dare put the washing out uh, but it never lasts long so the answer is usually it's not worth it but yeah so I I wholly recognise the fact that the weather can not make its mind up at the moment 
but I will take the nice days when they come and dream of many more of them, is what I will do. Uh, James says, hello, my name is James. I've just finished a Diamond Art Club painting, Elizabeth. Oh, that is an amazing one. Uh, she says it's her first one and he's from Latham near Blackpool. Well, hello, James. You picked a very nice painting for your first one. I have seen, I think it was Stitcherista who completed the Elizabeth painting and had it framed in a really nice ornate frame and it looked absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, that is a very nice painting to do. And hello and welcome to the diamond painting madness that is this channel. <sighs> Every now and then it gets a little bit crazy, especially the later in the evening it gets for me. I often, yeah, I'm a nighttime person. Definitely more so than a morning person. Uh, Dale said, yay, a whip and waffle with Rebecca. Said, I can't wait to see this painting completed. Well, we're nearly there, Dale. We're very nearly there. Uh, only this section and one more section to go. Um, said, so glad that your kitchen is almost complete and sorry that Megan has been ill. Hope she gets better soon. Um, it said we're going into autumn here in South Africa. We have had a few colder days. However, today it is 25 degrees with beautiful African sunshine. Oh, I can only dream of 25 degrees in the summer here. Um, it's busy doing Train of Dreams from Diamond Art Club for his niece's bedroom. Sorry, I'm just finding another colour. Ah, oh, not bedroom, sorry. Niece's playroom. That'll teach me to look at the sentence that I'm about to read and then look away. Uh, niece's playroom said, you gave me the courage to do bigger paintings and they chose this painting for me to do. Uh, it said, gulp, it is really big though. Well, one section at a time, Dale. It's all one diamond at a time, whether it's a big one or a small one. It's still one diamond at a time. That is all that you can do. That is all that you can be expected to do. And it will just take a bit longer. Um, so they only started diamond painting in November last year. And Trainer Dreams is their fifth painting so far. Well, the other main recommendation I can give you with a big diamond painting, apart from the fact you can do it, you can definitely do it if you've done five, lay them all next to each other, it's probably the same size as your big one or close enough. Um, it's not necessarily harder to do a big one. It's, it's the motivation side of things with a big one. So the fact that you're doing it for your niece's playroom is a good start. You're doing a big diamond painting that has a place to go, a home to be displayed and loved. But it's the motivation with a large painting, especially if you've only done smaller paintings that you have got finished within X amount of time. Sometimes a large painting can feel like it's taking a very long time. So if you find that you're hitting burnout, which can sometimes happen with a painting, you can feel as though it's never ending and you're not enjoying it, then maybe take a little break to do either another small painting or do an off the canvas item or something that just gives you that that little bit of break from the same diamonds and the same symbols, but also gives you that satisfaction of something being completed. 
i.e. you've completed an off the canvas item or you've completed a different picture and then go back to your big one. Um, but if you're enjoying doing it and the fact that you're doing it for your niece's playroom is driving enough, then keep at it. I, I often have two different paintings on the go. I often have, well, not including my heaven and earth design, I often have a small and a large painting on the go. But I have found with this painting, I don't know whether it's, I don't know what, whether it's just been the colours in it or whether it was just the amount of time that I was able to diamond paint when I first kitted it up. But I found I've not felt burnout with this painting. I've not felt like I need to be doing a different type of diamond painting for the satisfaction or even just for the change. I think it happens to me a little bit more with squares than it does with rounds. But that's just because I can do rounds so much quicker and I can see the progress quicker. Um, but yeah, as long as your motivation's still going, if not, don't beat yourself up. Just take a little pause, even if it's just a couple of days doing something different and then go back to it. Um, but I am so happy that you have started a large painting. That's amazing. Um, Cat Lady, she said, hope you had a good Mother's Day. She says she's writing this comment on the Monday following my video um, as the video came out later on Sunday so yes that was my late video um, so it fell when she was cooking sorry I do always aim for 4 or 4 p.m UK time which at the minute is British summer time I always aim for that time Sometimes, though, YouTube doesn't want to play the game with me, depending on when I got it filmed. Um, but she says she's all caught up now. She has enjoyed the sunny days we have been experiencing. She says, but they're now all threatening cold again. Yes, I kind of don't want to look at the weather at the moment as I'm filming this for the next week. Um, I think I don't want to be disappointed maybe if we mm -hmm. memory card um maybe if we do if i do wake up to sunshine maybe i'll then have a look and see if it's there to stay you know for washing purposes but i am long 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 awaiting spring and nice sunny days with nice fresh air that's what i like okay two more colors to go Whoop, whoop. so close to finishing this painting um Anne marie said hope you had a great mother's day love a whip and chat she says like having company oh i you guys have been keeping me company all day uh can't wait for the june waffle um she said have started to keep an eye for something that she wants to do doesn't usually do scenery, but she's thinking maybe a sunny Chuck Pinson or similar. Um, she's currently doing I Miss You by Mandy Manzano and loving it. It's a round two and she hasn't done a round in about a year. Thank you for keeping me company. I think that's what made me fall in love with rounds again is doing squares for so long and for so many. I think it then felt really nice going back to doing a round. And now I really like the mix up. I say I appreciate each of the round and the square for what they are and enjoy them for their different things. Um, Jessica, she says, hi, love your videos. Hope your day is going well. She said, question, have you thought about doing a live whip and chats? Uh, Jessica, that is a yes, yes and a no. So I have thought about it, but no, I don't think that's the route I want to go down. There's a couple of reasons. 
One is I do need to drag somebody else in to sort of be an admin and get rid of any computer bots, you know, these things that people set up just to torment us in our everyday lives. I don't want to have to, you know, drag somebody else in to do that. But mainly the reason is I find it very hard on live whip and chats if I'm watching them back. Um, I find that, you know, you have to be there and present and reading the comments. And sometimes it can be very hard to make sure that what you're talking about or a question you're answering is actually read out so that people know what you're doing. Um, when comments are, are popping up on the screen, I haven't necessarily got the chance to read out the full comment and then discuss it. I find it's very, very hard for people to keep track of, myself included. Um, I have listened in to, I think, one live whip and chat that somebody did. It actually popped up when it was on and I listened to it for a bit. I was free. I even joined in on some of the commenting for a bit. But then when I went back afterwards to sort of see how it went, I found it extremely hard to follow because... Of course, I wasn't there reading the comments as they were coming in. So I think that's the reason live is not for me. But I do want to approach and answer all of your comments, which is why I go through either longer whip and chats or more whip and chats so that I can read out everybody's comments and answer everybody's questions and have the chit chat discussions but with everybody able to watch it in their own time and know what I'm talking about, um, which only happens because I read out the comments, which I can't do on a live one. Not as easy anyway. It's, it's very, very bitty. But I'm happy to do, if people want more of a Q&A thing, I'm happy to do more of a, a whip and chat once where it is just your questions give me questions and I, and I answer questions rather than read out comments. I'm happy to look into things like that. I just think for whip and chats, it's nicer to watch back or to listen to while diamond painting if, the, if you don't have to constantly be reading the comments yourself. Um, you can use it as chill time rather than having to concentrate too much. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that section is completed. Um, I hope you join me when I get my final section done and get Mother Earth completed. And maybe I'll give you a quick sneak peek at what she looks like and then we'll do more of a... Uh, no, nah, I'll probably just unroll the whole thing when it's finished and then of course I'll show you all again when I de her for real so do keep an eye out for my next whip and chat whenever that will be say I've got no idea when these are getting scheduled I'm just doing them and then I'm just gonna put them up on all the days that I don't have another video um but yeah thank you all so much for joining me if you are still here uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one and I'll speak to you all again soon.